So it's a Friday night. What are you planning on doing? Oh, my mind is kind of half in the bag. Road, so. Half in the bag from what? Episode 33, Limited Trust, a Devastator podcast. Um, well, I'm sure everyone who is listening, um, you know, follows and is uh, up to date on what the fuck has been going on with me. Uh, and if you don't know... Um, I know in uh, some episodes, even recently, I think with with the last Taro episode and the last True episode, well, well, the first True episode, I should say, um, and just over all these last thirty two episodes, I I think I've mentioned Gary a couple times, and um, and that he had lung cancer. He had just been diagnosed with lung cancer uh, within the last six weeks or so. Uh, but he he ended up dying. Um, on Tuesday, um, what happened was, uh, they, they, they knew about the cancer. I, I, I talked to him on, uh, Easter and they found the cancer, um, and they were going to start radiation to shrink it, I guess was the, the plan. So he was coughing up blood uh, probably last weekend. Probably, uh, probably about a week ago, um, and he ended up in the intensive care unit, and he was, you know, alert, awake. Everything was, you know, I guess as it is, and when you're fucking in intensive care. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know. Was that intensive care? Whatever. I don't know. But he was up, normal and shit. You know, he he had his brother drive him over there, and um. They they did the sh- first shrinking procedure. I, I don't really. I'm not really familiar with all this shit, you know. So, medical talk. I I'm just kind of repeating what I feel like I've heard before. Um. But me- medically, uh, I think they started the treatment, which they found out that the tumor had grown, and it was now going into his trachea and there was something about blocking a lung off they couldn't block the one lung because the one had cancer in it and that's where they needed to work so they needed to block a lung to be able to work in it so it didn't fill with blood or some fucking shit I'm not really sure something about blocking a lung off or something and they weren't able to do it so when they hit it with radiation, I guess it made made makes the skin like kind of fry or crispy around where they are radiating, and he just started bleeding like massively. Um, so they 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 told them you're gonna drown in your own blood if we don't uh, intubate you. Intubate ventilator ventilator. Do you get intubated when you're on a ventilator? So they asked him, what do you want to do? And he said, fucking tube me. And that would be the last time that he uh, was awake and conscious. Um, so they tubed him. And every time they tried to get a scope down uh, the the airway or wherever it, they were putting the scope down, airway, I guess, esophagus, it was filling with blood. Um, they couldn't radiate anymore because... Every time they radiated, it would make it bleed more, um, and then it got to the point where you couldn't. He had to be elevated, like with a, one of his, his side up or something like that. Or, uh, it was fucked up. And my my little sister is the proxy, and um, I, she inherited everything, all of his stuff in his house and everything. Um, so she was the medical proxy, and she's fucking. She, she's too young to be doing all this, man. She didn't need all that extra, extra stress. But she was fucking super tough, man, because she was dealing with his whole family. And obviously, there was some smoke because they didn't want, you know, he wanted her specifically, but they've been very close, as we all have been um, all of our whole lives. And, uh, so 
after days um, on the ventilator, they said uh, they don't see him coming off the ventilator. And, and I, I actually happened to be at the hospital for this uh, meeting with the doctor when he came in. Because I, I don't know how much they see the doctors or some shit. Maybe not as much as the nurse. Whatever. And he said, he was, was kind of cool. Shout out Dr. Roto. He, uh, he said, I don't see him getting off the ventilator ever. And he's like, you got a couple options. He's like, one, he goes, we can keep him alive like this for a long time, longer than you will imagine. And he goes, bed sores won't kill you. This, he goes, we can keep him like this for a long time. He goes, and I, this is probably about the most alive he's ever going to be ever again. And uh, so she had either that or pull the tube, pull the medication, and then he drowns on his own blood. There's no way to stop him. He, he, he can't because of this internal bleed. They said, or we could, you know, keep him alive on the vent till the cancer kills him. And, uh, so she, he had his wishes that he didn't want to be on, on, on the thing, on the fucking tube. So she had to make some super tough decisions that, um, fucking sucks to be her, man. I'm like, really? Because I can understand how that would be. Just actually, no, I, I can't understand how how difficult that would be to have this authority or power over someone that you care about. Where you know it's not like you're telling your kids it's time to come in the fucking from being playing outside. The streetlights are on. You know this is like phew, super brave kid, man. I love you, Emma. You're a fucking real one. And, uh, so, so, uh, so they, uh, did the comfort care thing and, um, and he made the fucking cross, <clears throat> excuse me. And what, I, I don't know if I told, I, I think I did, but I'm not sure. But when the night I got my felonies and shit and. The guy who fucking came and picked me up with the fucking 44 behind his back and shit. That was fucking Gary, man. Gary was a fucking dude. He was, and today I was just at his house all day. We're going through all the stuff. This dude had like the most fucking detailed record system of fucking anything I've ever seen. Like phone calls and fucking the dates that mail came in and this all this fucking shit man he and i mean we all knew that he was like this you know because i've known him my entire life and we found like all these drawings and stuff and all these little things i gave to him my whole life all these little pictures and shit that i drew i think i got to take those home with me and a, and a bunch of other stuff and uh it's, it's fucking super weird going through somebody's shit man I don't know, a lot of you have probably done that before, you know, had to. And I've only ever done it at estate sales and shit. Um, but it's super weird, like, sorting through people's stuff and and um, and making hard decisions on, you know, what's realistically going to go and what, what can't go. And he lives in the fucking hood, like the hood hood, like my neighborhood. And uh, so you kind of got to be sly about it. You got to have people stay in there and shit. And his, his dog is there. My mom was getting his dog. And it's just been fucking. I'm like fucking heartbroken over this. And going to his house and going through all these tools and all these little intricate things. Like I took this socket set because. It was a plastic box, like a craftsman socket set. But at some point, the little plastic latches broke. One of them broke. And I think he broke the other one off. And he wel he fucking welded and riveted a custom latch for this fucking $5 plastic fucking box. Oh, the pizza man is out there tripping. 
he hears me in here and he's fucking mad. But uh, for this little box of these sockets, and I was like, oh, I gotta have that. That's fuck. I'm gonna, I'll show it to you guys. Like that, this shit is so Gary. And, uh, and just everything. And he wanted all his fucking guns destroyed. So, Emma, Brandon, if you guys are listening, I think that was Al. He shouldn't have done that. Just so you know. And I know you know that. Uh, and you know that I think that. But I don't think that. And it's not about value or anything. But in the times that we're living in, man, if if things disappear... And nobody knows about them, and they just get wrapped up in a towel somewhere, just in case, for a fucking rainy day. I don't think that ever hurt anybody. But that's just my opinion, and I don't have nothing to do with this. But it was a fucking shame seeing all these fucking pistols that he used to carry. He had his fucking, he had the forty-four and the thirty-eight that he carried all the time. Well, he, I think he retired the thirty-eight um, a few years ago for the forty-four. And then he had the fucking 25 in his pocket, which is funny as shit. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, it's fucking, it was it's, it's super weird going through some of these things. And, and But it's got to be done, you know. Um, and it, and it, it takes a lot of sack to, to kind of, you got to separate what you're doing to what, what you're looking at. And you kind of have to you have to be realistic about how much of this stuff can be kept how much of it can be can be you know divvied up between people you know and the family and things that people people want you know things and and little um sentimental things like i got a nice little and that's all i wanted i would have been happy with the keychain but i got a nice little handful of these these items that uh that i'm really happy about and, and, and all kinds of tools and shit like that But it was just like Like the things that I really Wanted Were just these little things that fit in my pocket And um, And I was really happy that I got the uh, The silver dollar keychain Because I remember that from when I was little And uh, like little 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 Like I, I, I can remember Gary I remember I went and stayed at his house And when my my sister that died when she was born and he had to explain to me that she died and I was just a baby I was just little myself and you know I woke up I was all excited like oh the new baby's here the new baby's here because they dropped me off over there before he went to the hospital and then he had to he had to gently explain to a a little baby I don't know I wasn't a little baby but I was really young what happened and um and he always had he had he had two ways he had well he had multiple ways i shouldn't say that but he had two ways for certain um of of talking he was super loud fucking cursing like basically talk like me just loud fucking this that da, 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 da. and then then he had this other way of talking where it was gentle and it was thoughtful, and it was, it was thoughtful and well thought out, it wasn't, um, it wasn't just, you know, like while we were talking shit, so when I put those voicemails and stuff, and I'll probably, I'll probably put a little piece of one, um, on here, like I use, man, I used to save all those fucking voicemails, and I, I I know they exist somewhere, I got all the ones, excuse me, crack my fucking neck I got all the ones somewhere they're somewhere on a disc or on a hard drive or something somewhere but they were so fucking funny <laughs> and then whoever the fuck in my family told them I was doing that then then it fucked them up <clears throat> but I'm really glad that he came to Easter cause he was tripping about the COVID thing for a long time and uh it, they really fucking scared him with that shit. He definitely wasn't trying to get that. And uh, so it kept him away from family functions um, for the most part for a couple of years. And uh, so it was like, I don't know, it was just it was just supposed to happen, I guess, that he was at Easter. Unless he, unless he knew, you know, so I don't know, sometimes, I don't know, sometimes people say that you, you know, you know. 
when you know, you know. Um, I don't know. I'm, um, I am currently, uh, carrying guilt with, um, not being a good a friend as I could have been. Um, getting distant over the years and not checking in and and I and I justify it to myself by saying well phone works both ways man you know you could have called me you know um and, but that's just a pathetic way uh that I'm trying to justify not doing my part and just you know in a relationship with somebody who I cared very much for and I sitting here I I still can't fucking believe that that he fucking died. Like I'm having trouble. And this isn't my first loss. This isn't my second. But it was uh it was fucked up in a way because typically in you know, I I'd say when people die uh, in our normal lives, it's sudden, or, you know, it's tragic, well, it's always tragic, but it's sudden, it's fucking, you know, a car accident, or a suicide, or a drug overdose, or a massive heart attack, or, you know, died in their sleep, whatever, old age, or, you know, it's like, boom, done, but this fucking weird buildup to a catastrophic hospital fucking thing was just like you 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 knew it was coming they gave my sister the options you knew what the options were you you I had input you know what do you think am I doing the right thing yes I do think you're doing the right thing I do um Gary was a loud motherfucking dude and being here quiet with this tube was just not in character at fucking all so um but this long and long it was days but it felt i mean it was like i'm sure it felt for them for emma it felt it must have felt like a year um of days of figuring what to do and and how to do it uh and and and, and try to get everybody's input um it was like this slow burn to you know what the fucking ultimate you know what the end is you know what's coming and something about it just doesn't feel the same as when somebody just drops dead you know it's like that's like this sudden shock of oh my fucking god i can't believe it but this was like this slow downfall over the course of just a couple of days um so I I over the past few days I've actually um I kind of remember and this sounds this sounds crazy but I kind of remember like like every every couple hours I'm like oh shit fucking Gary died and then and then a couple more hours goes by and then then you know and I see you know, I get to work and Jimmy's there and I'm like yeah. Oh yeah, I was just fucking talking to my sister. They said, you know, the service is then or whatever. And um it's weird. I just yeah, I don't know. I don't think I don't think anyone's dealing with this one uh that well in my family and and we and in all of us are, you know, I was there with my mom and my and Stevie and my sister and and Erica and fucking and at so at one point <clears throat> Alyssa and Sophia and uh we were all there today at the house just like well they actually just kind of came along to support my fucking little sorry ass going through all this stuff um but we were all there and it was just like you know it's kind of a it's a super downer thing to do and I'm uh, um I'm struggling to process, even though I know this isn't, this isn't my, I've done this 
a hundred times. I haven't done it a hundred times. Let me not say a hundred times. <laughs> You're a bad luck motherfucker if you've been on a hundred funerals. Um, but I think we've all had our share of funerals and wakes and bad news. And, um, and even, and I know even myself, like, I've heard about people that I grew up with, you know, that died fucking five years ago and shit. I'm like, damn, that's weird, you know? Um, but I just, I keep, I just keep thinking about them and I'm in, uh, thinking about all the funny shit we used to talk about. And I used to go, I would, I would go be drinking heavy and I'd go in the morning. He would always call me up. And I would leave wherever I was staying at and go to his house and we would have breakfast. Or depending on how, how fucking long of a night it was, we would have lunch at his house and he would cook and fucking, and, you know, call me, coffee's on. And that was when I, then, and he would call at fucking nine o'clock. If I wasn't there before nine, he was like calling and shit like, yo, why are you not here? Where you at? And I'll, I'm going to fucking miss that. I'm going to fucking miss. I'm going to fucking miss you. All that shit. He was a fucking gangster too, man. He really was. That motherfucker would kill somebody for one of us. Or die for one of us. Just at, at the drop of a fucking hat. And he would just tell me, like, he would tell me if I was fucking up or if I was fucking doing the wrong thing or what the fuck you doing. But, but he would never judge you. Like, you could, like, like I could just tell him I was you know, I'm fucking strung out on drugs or whatever the fuck. And he would never judge me. He would tell me, like, dude, you, you got a, you got fucking more important shit going on than this or that. And I remember when I was real little. All of a sudden, Gary had to leave, right? <laughs> like, mad little. And he was out. He bounced. And he was gone for a long time. And then I got a package in the mail. And uh, it was it was a, a cassette tape. He left with him and his dog, Shadow. And cassette tape. Oh, excuse me. With um, pictures that, that accompanied it. And... Uh, and, and and he drove around, take well. He must have went around, and got all these pictures, and uh, and and narrated them on this cassette. So I would be like listening to this cassette, and he'd be like, "You know, this is this is the La Brea Tar Pits, and this is da 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 next, and then this is this da 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 da, and that happened here here here." And I know I got them somewhere. I, I got all that shit somewhere. I didn't, I, don't know, I would never throw something like that away. It's somewhere. And you're like, oh, yep. And then there's this. And da, 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 you know, and then there's Shadow. And you'd be like, yeah, it's a Shadow, calm down. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. That was just fucking. So anyway, so, so. And then I remember one day my mom woke me up. And she's like, there's a surprise for you outside. And I was like. Surprise for me outside, and I went outside on Carn Street, and I'm looking, I'm looking, and there I see his big ass van, and I was like, "Yo!" And I fucking ran out there, oh, bah, 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 bah. and he fucking Gary was back, man. He said uh, there was an earthquake that happened, and he said, "I said I'm getting the fuck out of here." He was, I think he was in Arizona at that time, and then he bounced and came back here. But I, but the story was that he, he had robbed some drug dealers back in the day, and then he had to bounce. That was a story that I heard later on. I don't know if how true it is or not, but, and I remember when he got like this recognition thing at work, fucking, because he's a body guy, he did body work, and they put his name up on a fucking on the thing outside of the baseball field for like employee of the month, and he's like, he's like. Yeah, come on, we're going to drive, we're going to hit the inner loop a few times until we see it. And it was like the first time we went by, and there it was, fucking, there's Gary's name in the lights. And he goes, fuck. He goes, some people who probably thought I was dead or thought I was gone from the city. He's like, and now they'll know I'm back. <laughs> you could tell the gears are turning in his fucking head, too. He was like, fuck. 
But I don't, I don't think I think whoever the fuck he was dealing with back then in the fucking early nineties, late eighties. I don't, I don't think they had no smoke in fucking two thousand and four. I remember one time this motherfucker, <laughs> he was all convinced that cigarettes were cheaper in Pennsylvania for whatever reason. I don't know. He must have read this shit in the newspaper. Right? He's like, he said, we're going on a fucking road trip to go to go fucking load up on cigarettes. So he had this pocket full of money, right? <laughs> so we drove for fucking hours, like not just like over the border of Pennsylvania. Like we drove like a fucking... We had like a fucking five and a half hour ride to wherever the fuck he thought we were going. Well, we did go. <laughs> and we got there. And those shits were the same price. <laughs> and he was looking like the gas station was broke or something. He was like, what the fuck? What the fuck? They're the same fucking price. Fucking five hours fucking south. <laughs> so we bought one car. <laughs> For the same price. <laughs> and then, so he had this, uh, you know, he spent way too much money on this Cavalier, right? It was, it, I had a 94 Cavalier, a black one that was a fucking, like, it was like my fucking graduation gift. It was 500 bucks. You know, he spent like fucking 3200 on the 93. <laughs> And then he fucking, he custom painted it like this crazy, like, oh, that's the car in the, I don't know if you've seen the reel, where he pulled up and he like faded the paint, he spent mad time on it, he put like a Ford Escort silver wing on the back and shit, he like fucking loved this car, and I fucking, <laughs> I thought I threw my cigarette out the window, and I, I fucking blew back in the car. <laughs> And it fell in the crack of the seat in the back and it fucking burnt the seat all up, man, bad. So he was so fucking mad, he kept looking at it and touching it like it was about to get fixed. Like it was going to wipe off. <laughs> it was all burnt down to the foam. <laughs> it was mad, bad. <laughs> and, and he didn't say nothing. He, like, he didn't, he, he, and I, but I know that shit was bothering him. He kept... Now, so then we, we start driving again, and, and he keeps looking back at it like it was fucking, like it might not be there. Oh, fucking Gary. If I had to sat here, I could just think of a fucking million stories. He was just a funny motherfucking dude, man. He was funny. He used to say funny shit. And he just, he was just a loving guy that didn't judge anybody. Fucking come as you are. I could bring over any kind of fucking person over there. And I, I wouldn't just bring, you know, I didn't just bring motherfuckers over, you know. But anyone I brought there, he knew they were good because he knew that I wasn't bringing no fucking riffraff over there. And I am going to miss you. So, yeah, I'll see you when I get there, Gary, just make sure you save us all a spot, love you, man.